Hey, how we doing everybody? OPD here. It's another beautiful day in the Cheesy Moon Workshop. And uh, in this video, I'm going to be working on this knife that was started, uh, this project was started, gosh, 10 years ago. And uh, I didn't have a drill press or anything to aid in putting scales on the, on the handle. Um, this is a beast that is one quarter inch at least, if not more. This steel came from an old saw blade from uh, one of the big saws at the trust company. We uh, were replacing the blade and they were going to just throw it out. I asked if I could have it and I commissioned a, a local shop. To cut out some of these knife blanks on the water jet and uh, and then I profiled a simple I guess they call this a Scandi I, I didn't know at the time I was just messing with it uh, put a bevel on it um, I had him water jet uh, a hole here this is a cleaver style chopper uh, was fully intended to be part of my camping gear, but as you can see, it uh, didn't really make it too far. One thing I did do with this um, several years ago, let me see if we can make out the top edge here where it's rolled over. My uh, grandsons, we were making mallets, oak mallets from some oak stumps and this top edge is beat down and rolled over from beating this knife through some stumps to split them into blocks for making mallets, wood mallets for um, Father's Day gifts for their dads or in my grandson Luke's case for his uncle. But um, yeah, the top of this is just beat to death, but that blade is just undamaged whatsoever. And uh, I'm going to clean this up on the grinder out there. We're going to get rid of all this or some of this rust. I might leave some just for character. I'm going to see if I can manage to get some holes in this tang. And uh, we'll see where this one goes. So stay tuned for a follow-up. And uh, we'll get this one started. Okay, well, I have this Scotch Bright belt on here. We'll see if we can just knock some of this rust off of this thing. Okay, now I've switched over to a very aggressive 60 grit belt to uh, take off these areas where the top edge is rolled over. And excuse the shadows, I'll, the sun has done crawled up on me, I'm no longer in the shade. Well, that took care of the rolled edges, and you may have noticed, uh, some of my regular viewers may have noticed, I, I did not have to quench that blade during that sanding there, because it was a really high 
aggressive grit and it really does not build up heat like a finer grit belt would do. There's still some marks in the top, but I may leave those as character. I don't know. I might sand them down a little bit. In fact, I will sand them down just a little bit right now. Yeah, that cleaned it up a little bit. Still some marks on there, but hey, I'm not making works of art here. I'm making knives. So we'll move on to see if we can uh, drill the lanyard hole and uh, or scale hole for the scales, and maybe a lanyard hole. I want to make a couple more passes, see if I can get a little bit more of this rust off. But I'll pick up with the drill. Okay, get the drill press set up. This handle or, or tang already had some uh, some blue tape on it. But if it didn't, I would have put it on there. Because when I'm drilling something like this, I found that this tape um, helps to stop the, the blade from walking. Or the, the bit from walking a little bit. We'll see if we can get this going in here. Well, now that wasn't too bad at all. I tell you, there's nothing in the world sharper than those little millings off of that drill. I don't know if y'all saw that, but the uh, millings that were built up on that drill bit grabbed the little plastic cap off of here and flinked it across the yard, so I'm going to stop and go find it. Okay, I found it. The drill press is on low speed, so it was only about 12 feet away. Okay guys, I think I've gone as far as I'm going to go on blade for now, um, as far as getting it cleaned up and, and whatnot. Um, I think that's as far as I want to go. You know, this is not a uh, 
a masterpiece item I'm trying to sell or whatever. It's going to be a camp knife. I've selected some purple heart for the handle. I'm going to get that drilled up and then we'll get it shaped up and uh, we'll go from there. How are we doing everybody? It's a beautiful Sunday morning here at Cheesy Moon Workshop. I've been working on this uh, camp knife here. I put some purple heart handles on here. Got them shaped down. This is a beast. This is not something you want to use all day long. It's, it, I'm guessing it's probably a couple pounds at least. But uh, got the handles made. And um, we're going to see what we can uh, see when we put a little bit of oil on these scales here. I've never worked with this stuff before, so we'll have to find out together what it looks like. Well, I think that looks just fine. I'm going to sand these handles one more sanding. This was a very rough 80 grit paper that I used to shape these on the belt. I can hear it. I can hear the roughness when I rub my hands across it there. But that's a pretty good idea what Purple Heart looks like. I guess you see that dark grain right there. And when you buy the boards at the, at the wood supply, some of those, I mean, they're full on large sections of purple running through them. It's actually pretty neat, but uh, again, this is just scrap wood. I think it looks just fine. In fact, I, I may leave it at 80 grit because the weight of this, I don't want a real smooth handle. Um, I think having a little bit of grip will be a benefit to me. I did um, test it on a couple of tree limbs and it just hacked right through them and that's the this is not a machete this is not carry out on the trail but processing kindling or or whatever without digging out the axe or the hatchet You use this for food prep, like a cleaver. It is somewhat cleaver shaped. And I put uh, a quick edge on it. Uh, nothing, nothing that's going to win any prizes. It, it's making a fool out of me now by not cutting. There we go. That's sharp enough for anything. I'm going to come up against on a camping trip. So, uh, it's a quick edge on it. I think that came out just fine. You don't want a super fine edge when you're chopping into wood or, or cutting uh, through the backbone of a large fish or whatever when you're processing. So, there you go, guys. The uh, saw blade chopper. Uh, I believe that would chop through just about anything I put in front of it. 
is really heavy. Again, uh, something I'm going to tote around all day long. But um, there you go, guys. The saw blade chopper from the workshop. Rust turned to patina. Oh, here's something interesting you might like. Get it to focus. These pins are bamboo pins. And um, you can see the oh you can see the grain, those long tubular grain that's in the bamboo. I was doing some reading last night, actual book. <laughs> um, it's an older book, and it was actually construction, and they were talking about how in Japan and in other Asian areas where there's a an abundance of bamboo, they made nails or pins to construct... Um, bamboo scaffolding and other bamboo furniture and they would take these bamboo pins and that's what held it together they would drive those in and it's super strong and and uh so i looked around and i found some uh bamboo skewers in my camping gear and that's what i sized my holes for for the and it was a nice tight fit. It coated in epoxy, epoxied on the handles. I don't think that blade's going to uh, come loose from them handles anytime soon. And it's uh, an interesting accent. At first glance, you think, oh, that might be brass or something. But then you look and see the grain and that it's actually just wood. Pretty cool. All right, guys. appreciate you tuning in. I'll patch all these short uh in progress videos together and get this thing posted today and hopefully it'll be out there for mammoth monday or, or something uh, machete monday i don't know it's just uh another one of those fun projects i had laying around so until i see y'all again have yourself a beautiful day